Hey there, welcome back. Uh, this is part two of our IIP3 discussion. Um, I cannot put up videos which are longer than 15 minutes on YouTube. That's why um, I'm making two parts here. So, um, so as we were discussing, the output versus input curve for these nonlinear devices is plotted here. And this is the linear term, the Vn term. Vn squared term will have a slope of 2, and Vn cubed term will have a slope of 3. Let me write that down as well. Um, for this line is slope equals 3. So suppose the output increased with the input linearly, as shown by this dotted line. The place at which this slope is equal to 2 line intersects that line is called the second order intercept point. Okay, ICPT is intercept. I just want to save some time here. And here, the slope 3 line, it, because it's steeper, you know, positive slope and it's steeper, intersects the same line at this point, which is slightly b before the second order intercept point. It's called the third order intercept point, ICPT point. Okay. All right, I have a little cold, excuse me, please. Now, when I say that the output is getting saturated, right, with increasing input, it's like I'm putting in 100 coins into a tube. I'm supposed to get 100 coins outside, right? But at one point of time, I'm just getting 80 coins as a, as a constant. What are the 20, where are the other coins going, right? I mean, when I increase the coin count. This difference, where is the rest of the input power going? Even though I'm increasing the input power, where is the rest of it going? Is what we're going to look at. And that wasted input power manifests itself as harmonics. Okay? We actually don't have to really worry about the second order intercept point because it comes after the third order intercept point. You know, if you keep physical significance of this is pretty simple. Uh, you have a little amplifier, okay, and you're you're giving it a lot of input power, right? And it's supposed to operate something and give you a little frequency in between. But if you give it slightly more input power, thinking you're going to get more output power, you'll start getting lesser output power and more of disturbances, more of noises. <laughs> right so that is what we're trying to avoid here and even those noises if you see from the second order intercept point terms we can get rid of the second order intercept uh, second uh, order harmonics because as I told you here as we discussed they're pretty far spaced from the fundamental or the uh, most basic uh, frequencies the fundamental frequencies but these the third order intercept points they're not I'm so sorry for this um, little, uh, I don't know what to call it. It's so messy. But anyways, I, I hope you were following the uh, my uh, flow here. Okay. So the third order sub point is where we're having trouble, right? Because they appear really close to the fundamental frequencies. Now, so that is the most important thing to consider, and it's called the IIP three the third order intercept point. I'm not really sure if it's called IP3 or IIP3, but even if you Google IIP3, all you get is third order intercept point on Wikipedia. So I think they both mean the same. I'm not really sure if they have a fine difference, and if they do, I will put up another video explaining that fine difference. Um, so that's about it, don't you think? The wasted input power is appearing as the third order harmonics and it's generally advisable to operate your amplifiers or your devices mixer detector whatever it is below below this point right so that is that is what I wanted to discuss and I, I think I think that's all it is um, as I told you before uh, at the starting of this lecture I would really like it if people would uh, if the viewers would um, comment on these videos and uh, let me know if you have another point of view than what I've presented here 
And I, I took this off of uh, Microwave Engineering by David Pozar. So if you get the chance, you can look at it. It's, it's chapter. Uh, it's a chapter. I, I have an old edition, but the chapter is called Active Microwave Circuits. And um, these are. Uh, this topic is called intermodulation products. And and these terms right here, they're all products in intermodulation products. I just didn't give you the technical term for it instead of having just uh, addition or subtraction frequencies. And 10 and 12 I gave you was just a uh, sample, not really true. Okay, and, and sometimes they're pretty close by, not even, they don't even have that much separation. So, yeah, I'll be uh, looking for some comments if you can. Great, thank you so much for watching. See ya.